Honey, what's the matter? You look like you just saw a ghost. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 worst TV plot twists of all time. This is a story about how you're totally in love with Aunt Robin. And you're thinking about asking her out and you want to know if we're okay with it. Principal Skinner? Up yours, children. I don't understand this autism thing, Pop. Here's my son. I talk to him. I don't even know if he can hear me. For this list, we're looking at the most underwhelming, predictable, nonsensical, or disappointing reveals from our favorite TV shows. And obviously, beware of big spoilers coming your way. So, which of these twists made you turn your TV off? Let us know in the comments. All right, let's get into it. Number 20. Sherlock has a dangerous secret sister. Sherlock. In series four of this popular show, Sherlock is encouraged to take on a case from a woman named Faith. I can't remember who my father wanted to kill. And I don't know if he ever did it. When he meets up with her later, however, she claims the two never actually met. <laughs> you're not there, you're not the woman who came to Baker Street. Um, well, no, <laughs> never been there. Eventually, John's therapist reveals that she pretended to be Faith and met up with Sherlock. In reality, she's actually Sherlock's sister, Eurus. Didn't it ever occur to you not even once that Sherlock's secret brother might just be Sherlock's secret sister? But the master detective doesn't remember her. Mycroft Holmes reveals that Sherlock suppressed the memories of their sister after she committed troubling crimes as a child. What happened to Redbeard? We never found him. But she started calling him Drowned Redbeard, so we made our assumptions. Yeah, this plot twist had way too many turns. It would have been enough if she was pretending to be Faith, a therapist, or a previously forgotten sister. But all three just felt needlessly complicated. Forget you ever heard him. Number 19. Nancy continues dating Steve. Stranger Things. It was already hard to accept that the smart and driven Nancy could fall for a jerk like Steve in the first place. Things got worse after they started dating. When Steve sees Jonathan in Nancy's bedroom, he and his friends spray paint a public message that accuses her of sleeping around. Oh! What is wrong with you? We thought this despicable act would be the final straw in their relationship. But after Steve helps Nancy fight a demogorgon, <laughs> she surprisingly takes him back in the season finale. Granted, he does grow into a much better person over several seasons, but this reunion came a short time after he was treating her like dirt. Their reveal was frustrating because Steve hadn't earned a second chance. Number 18. Agent Coulson got better. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. The moment where Loki executed Agent Coulson was pivotal in the MCU. His passing was an incredibly emotional tragedy that helped motivate the Avengers to rally together. However, this significant moment was completely rewritten on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I know that Agent Coulson was killed in action before the Battle of New York. Got the full report. Welcome to Level 7. Coulson appears in the first episode and claims his passing was a big hoax. Director Fury faked your death to motivate the Avengers. Well, the death of a common ally is a particularly effective team builder. After fans accepted that explanation, it's revealed he actually did die and was revived with the help of alien blood. What was needed, May? Someone who could repair your body, a technician who could reprogram your brain, and a specialist to help me put you down if it had to be done. These major revelations could have been avoided had they just put him into a coma or something during the Avengers. By resurrecting him instead, death was cheapened in the MCU. Hopefully, this helps prove that. Number 17. Saint Elsewhere was never real. Saint Elsewhere. For six seasons, the medical drama Saint Elsewhere gave us a grounded view of doctors working in a hospital with a bad reputation. Move her up to ear, nose, and throat, and I'll try and get a history. Dr. Fisk, is you're done. Get out of here. This made it utterly baffling when the show's reality was shattered in the finale. How's he been to give you any trouble? He's been sitting there ever since you left this morning just like it does every day. During the last scene, a young boy with autism is seen playing with a snow globe. As he sits there all day long in his own world, staring at that toy. After his father comments on his son's active imagination, the camera zooms in to reveal a small St. Elsewhere hospital inside the globe. Mm -hmm. 
This implied that the entire series actually took place in this boy's mind. This incredibly random revelation didn't just affect Saint Elsewhere. Since the show's events canonically cross over with Cheers and Homicide Life on the Street, fans were left wondering if they similarly took place in the boy's imagination. Yeah, well, I'm sorry about that. Number 16. Allison is Alive – Pretty Little Liars Initially, Pretty Little Liars centered around a group of friends and the disappearance of their leader, Allison. Allie? She's gone. What do you mean she's gone? I've looked everywhere for her. A year after the incident, they start getting blackmailed by a mysterious figure named A. They briefly suspect that A is Allison until her body is discovered. But the series is turned on its head once again when it's revealed Allison is still alive three seasons later. Did you miss me? Allison wanted people to think she met a gruesome demise to get out of A's crosshairs. This twist opened up so many questions about where she went and what she'd been doing. Allie, don't leave again. Look, I want to come home. But you have to help me. Allison's return was likely meant to spice up the mystery around A's identity, but the leaps in logic required to make it work did not feel worth it. <sighs> Number 15. The Father Isn't Dead – Revenge But that was a promise. I couldn't keep. If there's one thing that makes loyal viewers' blood boil, it's a series going back on its initial premise. That's exactly what Revenge did. The show was centered around Emily Thorne, who returns to her childhood Hamptons home after years of absence, secretly seeking vengeance on a neighboring family for betraying her deceased father. His only option was to forgive. I have others. After three seasons of building up our investment in Emily's motivation, the show then revealed that rumors of her father's death had been greatly exaggerated. What's the only thing more annoying than a series negating its own premise? A miraculous resurrection. Revenge only lasted for one more season before being canceled. It's not him. Just take your time. Number 14. Glenn was saved by a dumpster. The Walking Dead. Glenn and Nicholas find themselves on top of a dumpster surrounded by zombies on every side. Look at me! With seemingly no way out, Nicholas takes his own life. This act sends both of their bodies tumbling into the crowd of hungry walkers. Although it looks like Glenn was consumed, it's revealed four episodes later that this was never the case. We actually saw Nicholas's body get munched while Glenn crawled under a dumpster. This reveal felt like a slap in the face to fans who mourned him. To throw salt in the wound, Glenn meets a brutal demise in the next season's premiere. Looking back on it now, forcing fans to mourn him before his real end feels remarkably cruel. Someday this pain will be useful to you. Number 13. Terry McGinnis is Bruce Wayne's biological son, Justice League Unlimited. Where's Dad? Honey, I... Dad? Dad! In the wake of losing his father Warren to a violent crime, Terry McGinnis became the new Batman. Throughout Batman Beyond, an elderly Bruce Wayne serves as his mentor. Guess you're gonna rest now, huh? You go right ahead? My dad's probably waiting up for me anyway. But it's revealed in Justice League Unlimited that the former Batman was Terry's actual father. Your father thought he was getting a flu shot. Actually, it was a nanotech solution programmed to rewrite his reproductive material into an exact copy of Bruce Wayne's. The calculating Amanda Waller used nanobots to secretly replace Warren McGinnis's reproductive DNA with that of Bruce Wayne's. She concocted this secret plan to ensure Batman had a perfect heir. But when you're making a Batman, genetics is only part of the story. The rest is tragedy. Outside of the tons of ethical problems with this twist, it's mostly just unnecessary. The trauma would put you on the path to becoming Batman. Terry and Bruce already had a father-son relationship by the finale of Batman Beyond. There was just no reason to make them genetically related in the needless epilogue episode of Justice League Unlimited. Number 12. Suddenly, time travel? Felicity. Felicity Elizabeth Porter graduates with honors.
Considering this college drama series was masterminded by J.J. Abrams and his Cloverfield co-creator Matt Reeves, it's a little more understandable in retrospect that a what-if element was woven into the show. However, viewers at the time were caught off guard when a straightforward series about the highs and lows of the college experience going into the new millennium suddenly jumped genre, traveling back in time to explore what could have happened if Felicity had picked Noel instead of Ben. This isn't what I was wearing. Okay, look, you just you need to relax, that's all. No, I need to get out of here. I mean, what if someone finds us? What if Zoe finds us? Previously, hints of magic were sown by Felicity's Wiccan roommate, but nothing prepared fans for a full-on Back to the Future 2 twist. First of all, everything was perfectly fine. I mean, you know, on paper. Number 11. Rachel and Joey get together. Friends. While Friends fans can debate who made the best couple, most would agree that the worst pairing was Rachel and Joey. Ra 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 Rachel, Rachel? Yeah, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal? Oh, I'm sorry. I just. <laughs> um, I... <laughs> Although they do have a great rapport with each other, it was hard to see the sparks between them. I think I'm falling in love with you. What? <laughs> It didn't help that every single person on the show commented on how bizarre it was every time the relationship came up. Rachel and Joey! It's Rachel and Joey! What? Get over here! Even Rachel and Joey kept finding it weird. After a lengthy buildup, however, the unlikely pair shockingly tried to give a relationship a try in season 10. Oh, I can't believe I'm kissing you. I'm kissing Rachel! <laughs> only to give it up in less than a few episodes. It would have been much better for everyone if they skipped this relationship and just stayed friends. So we just keep trying and trying until we do it. Yeah, and if it doesn't work, then we'll just be one of those couples that never has sex. That's a plan. <laughs> Number 10, the spoiled and confusing Carver twist, Nip Tuck. In seasons two and three, a villain named The Carver attacked numerous victims as part of his twisted philosophy. You're not going to find anything to connect me to those carvings. I'm an innocent man. I'll be the judge of that. Although the unlikable Quentin Costa was a primary suspect, he was ruled out as the perpetrator in the episode Cherry Peck. So, have you arrested Quentin yet? To the contrary. We had to let him go. We came across some new evidence that rules him out as a suspect. Then, before the next episode aired, FX accidentally leaked that he was the Carver. Fans disappointed about this being ruined still had the chance to be disappointed again about Detective Kit McGraw. Do it, Christian. Do it! After she appears to fatally shoot Quentin, it's revealed that she was actually helping him fake his death because they're siblings. I arrived at the exact time we arranged. Don't you dare lecture me about that. They then escape together to search for more victims. Doctor's work is never done. This is another case of having too many twists at once. Even if the network had not ruined it, we would still be scratching our heads. Number 9. Charlie was actually alive. Two and a half men. Hello. I'm Charlie's brother, Alan. I want to thank you all for coming. I know this is a, a very sad day for all of us. Speak for yourself. <laughs> when Charlie Sheen was fired from his lead role on Two and a Half Men, the series had to move on. So they announced that his character had died in the season nine premiere. Charlie Harper was the love of my life and a wonderful, wonderful man. Everyone seemed to accept this fact, except the writers. In the series finale, it's revealed that Charlie had been held captive by his wife Rose since season nine. There was no proof that Charlie ever died. All we have is Rose's word. Right before he can reunite with his brother, however, a piano falls on top of him. <laughs> the show ends with producer Chuck Lorre turning to the camera before also falling victim to a falling piano. Winning. It was truly bizarre to see Two and a Half Men go out of its way to bring Charlie Harper back just for this violent gag. Number 8. Dexter Becomes a Lumberjack – Dexter If you ask any Dexter fan how they feel about the season 8 finale, be prepared for a long rant. I'm gonna miss you. It's just for a little while. It'll be fun. 
it sees the titular character initially trying to start a new life with his love interest Hannah and son Harrison. He temporarily leaves them to see his sister Deborah after she gets shot. What happened? The work on her now. Um, she stopped breathing. When she takes a turn for the worse, Dexter buries her in the ocean and sails into a fierce storm. I have to protect them from me. This emotional ending is immediately undercut when it's revealed that he's completely fine. He now lives alone and works as a lumberjack. Not only did Dexter abandon his loved ones, he also gave fans absolutely no closure to the long-running story. Hopefully, the upcoming revival will justify this shockingly bad turn of events. Number 7. Peter Petrelli Has Amnesia – Heroes After a strong first season, Heroes began to weaken. This series tracked an international cast of diverse characters with similarly diverse powers. One of the central figures from season one was Peter Petrelli, who was convinced that he had untapped, super-powered potential. As Peter got closer and closer to confirming his suspicions, even jumping off a roof to see if he could fly, we got more and more invested in the story arc. That's why it was so infuriating when the second episode of season two revealed that Peter had amnesia, taking his journey of self-discovery back to square one. Who are you? What's your name? I don't know. Number six, Principal Skinner isn't the real Seymour Skinner. The Simpsons. I have never been happier or prouder to be Seymour Skinner. You're not Seymour Skinner. For a while, The Simpsons did no wrong, but during season nine, fans felt a drop in quality, which arguably began with the principal and the popper. In the episode, Principal Skinner is unmasked as an imposter when the real Seymour Skinner shows up in Springfield. My real name is Armin Tamzarian. <gasps> <gasps> In the end, the town decides they'd rather keep the fake Skinner. This neat reset is a typical sitcom cheat, and this character detail is hardly referenced again. Hardcore fans refer to this as the show's jumping the shark moment, and creator Matt Groening seems to agree, having dismissed it as one of his, quote, least favorite episodes. I guess you're right, Principal Tamzarian. I'll just be moving along, Lisa. Number five, the show is Roseanne's story. Roseanne. Back when it first debuted, this sitcom about an ordinary family going through ordinary family problems struck a chord with a huge audience thanks to its authenticity. However, for the show's final original season, fans were asked to suspend their disbelief when the Connor family won the lottery, dramatically changing their lives forever. Yeah, but you know what? If this ticket was worth only, say, $10 million, I'd love it just as much. But wait, then came another shocking twist. It never happened. Instead, it was all Roseanne's memoirs, and she admitted to fabricating some pretty big parts of it. The finale ends with her reflecting on what could have been. Oh, and the worst part? That whole storyline was discarded for the 2018 Roseanne reboot. But the less said about that, the better. I think I'll be a lot better now that this book is done. Number four, Dan was Gossip Girl all along. Gossip Girl. Wait. Gossip Girl is real? You get out on your long way. The hook here was that the narrator, a New York blogger spreading dirt about the city's socialites, was a mystery. The final episode at last gave fans the answer. The Gossip Girl was actually a gossip boy. None other than Serena's beau, Dan Humphrey. Teenagers acting like adults. Adults acting like teenagers, guarding secrets, spreading gossip, all with the trappings of truly opulent wealth. Viewers were enraged by this, because it just didn't make any sense. From his overly realistic reactions to his own secret splurging, to the pain he put Serena and his sister through, to times when it was physically impossible for him to post anything. Or how about when he blackmailed himself via text? Sorry, Dan, we're just not buying it. He's left you. Um, you know what, on second thought, I think I will come tonight. I mean, who doesn't like school girls? Number three, the ninth season was a nightmare, Dallas. Season 8 of Dallas ended with Bobby Ewing dying after being hit by a car. Help! 
throughout the ninth season, all the characters, including his love interest Pam, try their best to move on with their lives. No. No. Don't do this to me, Bobby. Don't leave me. But the finale showed their grief was completely unnecessary because Bobby was alive. It was soon revealed that his demise and the entirety of season 9 was just a bad dream that Pam had. When I woke up, I thought that you were dead. What? I had a nightmare, a, a terrible nightmare. Although some were happy to have Bobby back, this revelation made hours of TV feel like a huge waste of time. It was hilariously apparent that the writers never originally intended for Bobby to be alive. Fans of the show definitely wish that this twist had all just been a dream. I got to tell you, Cliff, that makes a lot of sense to me. Number 2. The Flash Sideways Payoff – Lost With its labyrinthine storytelling, many consider Lost to be a game-changer in TV history. Am I alive? Yeah, you're alive. Another creation of J.J. Abrams, the series began with a plane crash on a mysterious island. The survivors then spent the next six seasons trying and usually failing to unravel its secrets, while plagued by weird smoke monsters, creepy co-inhabitants, and ghosts from their pasts – or futures? Meh. From the start, many suspected the island was an afterlife, but the ever-complicating plot lines promised something more interesting. Of course, there was some truth to the fan speculation, as the two-part finale confirmed the Flash Sideways timeline represented a form of afterlife where the characters meet up after they die. Looks like Desmond was right all along. I see you in another life, brother! While all the twists on this list are bad, our number one made me never want to watch the show again. Like, I will literally never rewatch it. Any guesses? Well, let's look at some dishonorable mentions, and then we will name what we think is the worst TV plot twist of all time. Olicity, Arrow, divisive fan service that felt forced. I'd like to assure you, I won't breathe a word of what goes on here to the press. Just thrilled to be part of your day. Can we get this over with? <clears throat> Aging drug, Oz. This plot device in an otherwise grounded show was hard to swallow. Well, as I said before, it's never been tested on humans, but the lab rats began to age in about three days. If I get old and wrinkled, will you still love me? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Mother is Dead and Ted Ends Up with Robin – How I Met Your Mother Are we being punished for something? <laughs> no. Yeah, is this gonna take a while? Yes. How I Met Your Mother was another long-running TV show with another long-running hook. Each episode was framed by protagonist Ted regaling his kids with a story from his past, which would eventually lead up to him explaining how he met their mother. Unless… do you want to walk around some more? It's still early. Given Ted's exceptional memory, this process took nine full seasons. After establishing that Robin was better off with Barney than Ted, who was better off with the mother, the show did a controversial 180 in its finale, killing off the mother and pushing Ted and Robin back together after all. So here's my thing. If How I Met Your Mother had ended earlier and we'd never gotten to know and love the mother so much, then that twist might have worked. But as it stands, hard pass. Anyway, be sure to let us know in the comments which TV plot twist fills you with the white hot rage of a thousand suns. Or come tell me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton or on my YouTube channel. See ya!